Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Alex, I'm a Google Developer Expert for Firebase and I'm gonna show you in this video how to use Firebase Cloud Messaging on Android. This is a video for an article that I wrote, link is in the description below, which was recently published on the Firebase Tips and Tricks publication on Medium. So let's begin. First of all, we learned how to add Firebase Cloud Messaging or simple FCM to an Android application, which will enable us to receive and send push notifications to users that are subscribed to a topic. So what is Firebase Cloud Messaging? In short, it's a cross-platform solution that lets you send messages and notifications at no cost. It's basically a bridge between cloud functions for Firebase or your server and the devices that allow you to deliver and receive notification on platforms such as Android, iOS and the web. What are the types of sending notification? You can send notification directly to specific devices by targeting their unique registration tokens or topics allow you to send notification to multiple devices that have subscribed to a specific topic. And there is also a concept called device groups, which allow you to send notification to a predefined group of devices. So how can we receive notification? We can receive notification either when the app is in foreground or in the background or even if the app is killed. What are the type of messages that can be sent to the clients? There are two types of messages. Notification messages, which are considered high level messages and are handled directly by the Firebase Cloud Messaging XDK automatically. This means that if the application is in background or killed, the notifications are going directly to the system tray notification. On the other hand, if the application is in the foreground, then it will get delivered to the on message received callback. It can include a title, a body and optional some data payload. The second type is data messages, which are handled by the client application and can carry only the data payload. Besides that, the notifications are delivered to the app's own message received callback regardless of whether the app is in foreground or in the background. How can you send notification to clients? There are three ways in which we can push notification. Cloud functions for Firebase, a server that you control or the Firebase console. So what is the application all about? First of all, we'll create a collection of books in Firestore. Each book will be represented by a document. Besides regular fields like a title, author, ID, each document will also contain a field called star. Our goal is to create a function that will send a notification each time the stock of a book gets under a threshold. So let's take a look of our application. I have my emulator running and now let's try to modify the stock for the first product. Let's change from nine to, for example, three. And now let's get back to Android Studio. And as you can see, the notification arrived. Let's dismiss it. And now let's try to send another notification where the app is in background. Let's modify the second book. Let's say again, two. And let's get back to Android Studio. And as you can see, the notification arrived again. And now let's try to kill the app, close it. And let's try to modify the last book. And let's say we have the stock of one piece. Let's get back to Android Studio. And as you can see, the last notification arrived. The most important thing in this mechanism is the function. Let me open up the article and show you the entire notification. A few things to notice. The on update function will fire each time a document inside the books collection is updated. Inside the try block, we create a condition that can allow a notification to be sent only if the current stack is less than, than the threshold and the previous stack is greater and equal to the threshold. Then we create a new object that contains the notification, which in turn contains a title and a body and some additional data. In the end, we call send to the topic function and we pass the topic and the notification as arguments. Now let's go ahead and see how this application looks like. Before seeing the code, make sure you have, you have added this version inside the build gradle project file and these dependencies inside the build module file. 
Right after that, we need to create a service inside our Android manifest file. It's optional, but I have also added some metadata that consists of a random icon from Android and the color that already exists in the project. In a real project, you should create a custom icon and choose a color that defines your project. Now getting to Android code, we have, let me close this files. We have a single activity that contains a column with a text center on the screen, as you already see. The most important thing in the above code is the fact that we collect the result of a subscription to the topic. Notice that the actual subscri subscription exists inside the init block inside our main activity view model class. As you can see inside the constructor, we inject an instance of the main repository that is created inside the app module file. The subscribe to low stock topic function exists inside the main repository interface. And the implementation of this method exists inside the main repository implementation class. The most interesting part of this video is related to the Firebase messaging service. So we need to create a class that extends Firebase messaging service. Inside the class, you have to override the on message received and non new token functions. When a notification arrives on the device and the app is in foreground, on message received function fires. To get the information out of the remote message object, we first have to get the notification and right after that, the title and the body. Once we have them, we can create a notification channel and the notification itself. The notification has the exact same icon as we said uh, earlier in the Android manifest file and the exact same color. The exact procedure is needed to get the data out of the remote message object. Please also note that the notification object is an object of time notification while the data is a map of string and string. Since we don't use tokens to send notification inside the all new token function, I just simply log the new token. In conclusion, that's the simplest way in which you can send and receive notification using Firestore Cloud Functions for Firebase and Firebase Cloud Messaging. I hope you find this article useful. And if you have any questions regarding this topic, feel free and leave a comment in the section below. In the end, guys, you can find the entire article on Medium. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. But if you think you learned something, you know, please subscribe to my channel because more videos are coming. Bye.